Well, it's been a minute. I figured it's about time to recap the two week wait and post two week wait. Kevin and I had our frozen embryo transfer on Monday, January 13th. So just about a little over a month after our egg retrieval. And um, that, that night we went out to dinner with my family and then the next day we drove back to California. It was a very quick trip and down to business, get home. So the night that we got back to California um, was the first time I kind of felt, um, I don't even know how to explain it because since I don't ovulate and I don't get periods, I, I have a hard time relating to what period cramps are. So it's not, I mean, I don't think they were cramps. It was more of like a pinching feeling. And I was like, okay, well, you know, we just did our transfer, it's, you know, normal. And I had every intention of not testing early, not symptom spotting, but that didn't last. I woke up on day four and I had no chill. Um, so four days post five day transfer and I peed on a stick and I sat there looking at it and I like I had mixed feelings because on one hand I was just completely gutted because I was like I don't see a line but on the other hand there was something um, and because it was a cheapie you don't get the evap lines it's not the same as if you're using a first response so I was like there's something here but it's not enough to warrant me taking a first response so that's it and that whole day I felt like shit I just I regretted doing it like why did I do this um, I should have just waited I, I didn't want to have line eyes and like throughout the day um, well actually when I got home Kevin was just you know being his positive self and just being wonderful and he, I was like you know what though really when I took it this morning it was only 3.5 days past five day transfer I mean my transfer was at 2 30 in the afternoon and I peed on a stick at 5 a.m. so there's still time you know and I kind of got back on that hopeful wagon like it's fine don't worry about it but then I woke up on five days past five day transfer and all the chill went out the window it's like well I've already gone down the rabbit hole we're just gonna keep going and I did another cheapie and this time it was again it wasn't a pink line but there was definitely something there and I was like, all right, I'm taking a prayer because it was enough for me to, you know, prayers are expensive. So when you say waste, like, <laughs> I don't mean, it's just, I only had two. So I needed to make sure that I was using them and I was not going to buy more because I didn't want to test until beta. So, you know, I'd already broken that and, um, yeah, so I did a prayer and when I flipped it over like my heart just kind of stopped because there was there was that second pink line and I just I was just speechless I didn't really know what to do um, I mean obviously I went and well actually I didn't tell Kevin right away because it was five in the morning and he was sleeping so I went and worked out and then by the time I got out of the shower and all of that then I told him because now it was like 645 so I didn't feel so bad waking him up but um, now this is obviously dried but this was my five day five days past five day trance and again I mean now I'm just deeper down the rabbit hole so on six days past, I peed on a stick and there was a line. And this time, oh, this was a cheapie by the way. The cheapie was pink. And on seven days, I woke up and I peed on another stick and it was pink. And on day eight, I woke up and I used my frere because it was my last one. It's only two more days till beta, not a big deal. And so on eight days past, Five day transfer I got another really good line and on day nine I took my last cheapie and comparing day nine and seven to one another 
I was starting to feel discouraged because it hadn't gotten any darker and the fear was now hitting that okay it started to implant but it didn't I just I couldn't help but think it because every step of the process has been you know like a struggle and a hurdle and I just I was not seeing the line get darker was was rough and then I went in for beta it was on January 23rd um, it was a stat report so I was expecting to get the call around 12 or 1 no the lab took forever to send it to my doctor and you know the doctor's now calling everybody who transferred on that day so you know I'm somewhere on the list and we got the call I think it was around 4 30 p.m. and um, my HGG was 416 and considering I had zero symptoms I was just blown away because at this point every now and then I felt the only I, the only way I can explain is it felt like things were expanding um, and every now and then there'd be like a pinch maybe but mostly just felt like things were expanding but other than that I mean I'm taking two cc's of progesterone and I'm not having any progesterone symptoms so it just it was really it was definitely a mind game of did this really work and even after getting my second beta results two days later which were 877 so they you know more than doubled I I was still struggling with the fact that I'm pregnant. I only told a handful of people. We didn't tell any of our family. Um, so, yeah, we did. We did text them the first day, like as soon as we got the first results, and let them know that we were waiting um, for our second results to say anything. So, yeah, that was the two-week wait, and now we're. I'm six weeks and four days today so now I guess we're you know two weeks past the two week wait and nothing has really changed um the only like real I guess you could say symptom I'm having right now is that I'm just really tired um and it kind of comes and goes in waves uh like last weekend there was pretty much three days in a row where I took a nap each day and I was just exhausted all weekend and then yesterday I was super exhausted and I took a two-hour nap um today I'm fine like it's just kind of coming and going um, other than that I feel like nothing so I know that at this point there's still people that don't even know they're pregnant so I know that it's just it's normal and um, you know I will I'll eventually start feeling things but right now it's just that that exhaustion and then yesterday also I finally had the first day of I don't know if it was quite nausea, but I just didn't feel great. Like I just didn't feel great, but I was also tired. So I felt better once I took the nap. So I don't know. Um, just a lot of changes going on. We did have our first OB scan on, what day was that? February 5th. And so that was five weeks and six days and um, everything looked great. And then I have my second OB scan on Monday the 17th. And if that all looks great as well then my specialist my reproductive endocrinologist is going to release me to my OB and I already booked the OB appointment for February 25th but I just I don't know I'm even though my RE is out of state it's just going to be weird not communicating with that office on a weekly basis because they've they've been there through everything and I just I fangirl over my doctor so hard I will refer every single person who asks <laughs> to him but yeah I just I've had such a great experience there and um, and so it's gonna be hard going to a different doctor now who you know wasn't on my infertility journey with me well she was the first like I don't even know four months because as soon as she diagnosed me with PCOS and then we had the failed clomid cycle I moved on to a specialist I like ain't nobody got time I, I was not gonna waste time with her because she's not a specialist um, so yeah she hasn't been through the whole thing with me so um, yeah we'll see but that's where I'm at right now uh, my plan is um, I'm still very involved in the infertility community because that doesn't go away like even even though I'm pregnant um, like I'm still infertile there's I'm not gonna get pregnant on my own um, Kevin and I will have to do when we're ready to grow our family more we're gonna have to do another frozen embryo transfer so you know that doesn't go away and the feelings don't go away um, you know I'm still gonna have to figure out what's going on with my hormones 
something with my endocrine system is messed up. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's where we're at. And I will do probably either weekly or bi-weekly, um, like updates regarding the pregnancy, just how I'm feeling, routines. Um, anybody who knows Kevin knows that he's, you know, a scientist and that he's a big researcher. So, uh, I'm, I'm excited to share just like how our research goes with products we're going to buy or, you know, just things like that. So yeah, that's where we're at. Um, I hope that you will continue along with me and I get to share the, you know, the next part of this journey with you. Thank you for watching.